Well, one way to understand the taboo is, like any taboo, it's, it's designed to maintain a certain social stability. That's what the taboo is about. To, to create a, a public illusion, an agreement, that we simply won't talk about this because if we talk about it, it will destabilize something. So what would be de destabilized here? What would be destabilized if, let's say, just take something like telepathy, for example. If everyone suddenly agreed that telepathy is real, it would probably destabilize Everything we know about law, about the way, about government secrets, about our own secret thoughts, if we all admitted that telepathy were true, then, well, we don't have any secrets, really. We're, we're connected in, in ways that are, are far more fluid than anyone would like to admit. I think this taboo goes through cycles. Uh, there were cycles in the 1970s where it became much more open. It was, it was closer to the surface and less taboo to talk about. And, and then in the 90s, it, it dipped in the other direction, and the taboo was stronger. Uh, to, so the question is, 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 there, is it a, a linear trend? Probably not. It's some kind of cycle. Is the cycle going up, meaning towards more openness? I would say yes. I would say it's not that cycle is not occurring as a result of, uh, of better evidence, even though we do have much better evidence now than we, than we used to but rather because science in general is going in a direction which is becoming more and more compatible with the idea that these things might be true. In other words, it's the theoretical and empirical advancements in the rest of science are making it more and more plausible that what used to be called this piece of the paranormal is becoming normalized. So we can imagine um, maybe 300 years ago or something like that when electricity was just first being not really understood but used for things. Uh, it tended to be very erratic, it tended to be weak. There were many, many variables that influenced the ability to get like a static effect. So we, they didn't know that humidity made a difference, for example, or, or that the material that you, one, one material rubbing against another, that there made a difference. They had to discover those empirically. But nevertheless, they were able to show that there were some effects, and it, it gave rise to enough repeatability so that now we have big power grids all over the place. So where we are right now for psychic effects is roughly like rubbing amber. We, we know under the right conditions that you rub amber a certain way and you can get sort of weak, repeatable effects. But what, what may be different here, though, is, and we don't really know if this is true or not, but what may be different is that there might be an inherent limitation to, to some psychic effects. So if I do an experiment involving intention into the world, and the world says, oh, no, you don't, maybe that cancels it. You see, so unless you have a, a very coherent collective mind that is all intending in the same direction, maybe it's a wash. And I, I think there, there's even some evidence to suggest that that is true. That, that there's something like collective mind, which would include collective intention effects, and maybe collective perceptual effects as well. So one scenario is that uh, they're just, with it by analogy to weak electrical effects that have turned into the major power grids, maybe now we're working with weak psychic effects that will later turn into some equivalent power grid. So what's a psychic power grid? One scenario is it would become something like a hive mind, a, a, a giant global mind, perhaps. And at that level, I don't know what the nature of intention and perception and all the rest might be. It's, it's too big almost to imagine. And then there's other scenarios where it turns out that with the right forms of amplification, perhaps, we might be able to create the equivalent of super psychics. Maybe permanently, maybe for short periods. It's hard to say. But there, there may also be a, like a third scenario where, where it limits itself. Let's say, for example, we create a system where day traders can become slightly precognitive. So whoever figures that out first is going to become real rich real quickly. But other people will figure it out later. And once, once you have a whole bunch of people playing the same game, 
that they're all being precognitive, you, you end up with this sort of a, a probabilistic mush where no one can outguess anybody else because they're all pushing the future around. The quantum Zeno effect says that if you are rapidly looking at a quantum system, you freeze it. You can't allow it to evolve. Well, maybe that would happen in a, in a larger sense. We're precognitively looking at our futures and causing it to freeze because of all of this observation. Maybe the future can't occur, in which case time stops. Now, these, these are science fiction scenarios, but at the level of very large-scale, strongly functioning psychic abilities, it's very difficult to outguess what's going to happen. Crisis breeds opportunity. Are you waiting to be safe or will you make yourself free?